It's quite light on Vikings. Vikings loved speed and simplicity. And a square light is no different. And the Vikings didn't need a permission to raid a village. So why wait for a server to handle your database? There's no servers with SQL light, no fluff, no nothing. It's just a file. And for us, SQL light is what the Vikings would raid with. And here's why you should too. Here we'll go through seven steps of how to do SQL light. Number one, how to make a product table. Number two, we will fetch our data using different parameters. We'll explain why SQLite is so good for you and how to use SQLite in memory. I'll also show you how to do cool things that other databases can't really do. And then we're gonna go through the downsides of using SQLite and a conclusion. Let's rate. <laughs> Unlike server client based databases such as Postgres, SQLite is actually just a C library. This grants tremendous speed and simplicity like a Viking longship gliding over waters. Now, why is SQLite so good? SQLite is practically just a file or two, and it is something you can touch, you can feel, you can move, you can delete. Database users and roles and setup does not exist, but instead it's just who can access this file. This shortens your feedback loop and increases your productivity tremendously. Talk is cheap, so let's get our hands bloody. First, we'll open a new database using SQLite meets db some syntax tips here it's convention to use uppercase for sql keywords and you can add comments using minus minus sqlite defaults are pretty good but let's just sharpen our x a little bit more we can make write queries a little faster by using write ahead logging now let's enable strict mode so that our types are enforced and we don't have some weird data coming into the database you may never be disloyal to the nordic gods nor foreign keys if you said pragma foreign keys to on. Synchronous mode also helps with speed as well. Let's get ready for the first raid. We first start by creating a product table. We can now insert some meats into our product table. Let's gather all our meats again and see what we have in the database. We do this with the select query. Now we want to hunt down all the stakes that we have and we can use the select but with where and like. This makes sure we get something that has a like of stake inside of its name. We can also fetch all products ordered by their name. And of course we can order by quantity to make sure that we have enough for everything in our raid. And fetching all the products in how many quantities we have. We can also count all of our supplies by using the sum. If you find this useful, don't forget to X the subscribe and like button. Now witness the SQLite magic that is just so easy and nice to use. We can run schema and we will see all of the schema of the database. This means all of the tables that exist in the database. And something even more incredible is that we can use the dot dump to see the whole state of the database. That means that when we fuck something up, we can very easily do this here and just take everything out of the database and see what's actually in our database. And if we want to dump it in a file, we can simply use this command here. It basically opens SQLite with this database and then calls the keyword dump and then we put it down into a file. Now we can edit it and load it into a new database by using the dot loads keyword. Or you can just copy paste whatever you want into it. Before we talk back up, there's a secret I want to share with you. Videobagger.com is using SQLite as a database. It makes screen recordings directly in your browser with no sign up needed. I use it every day when I code review my team's work or when I give feedback to clients or updates to clients. It's free to use, so take it for a spin and tell me what you think. And I promise you, you have never tried an easier software than videobagger.com. All right, back to backups. Backups are easy peasy with SQLite, but don't get tempted by copy pasting just a file. Sometimes it will corrupt. We can instead use the same command as before to make a backup. It's good practice to compress it and send it to a different server in case your hard drives go to Valhalla. SQLite and memory. SQLite offers more magic with having a complete database in the memory. You can simply just do SQLite without anything and it will open a temporary ephemeral database. And this database is extremely fast and it just works. But it also dies as soon as your program dies. When you start it in the ORM, you have to probably use colon colon memory colon colon as the file name. Multiple, multiple databases. databases. Memory is not the only magic you will discover with SQLite. Another is multiple databases, such as one database for every user. 
or organization. This makes development really fast if you do this. So for example, let's say you're prototyping something and you just don't want to deal with organizations yet. Well, you can just have an organization, one database, one organization. And this way you don't have to make an organization system. You just have to point what database are you working with here. And the data is completely separate. Downsides. There are no perfect weapon and no axe never dulls. SQLite is fast, simple, versatile and just works. But since it's a file, you can't connect to it remotely, reliably. But for most times, that's actually not really a problem. I even made a video called SQLite is enough that is somewhere here, if Costa can put it in there, that explains why you actually don't really need to scale up and be web scalable for most services. And SQLite is enough for you. Comparison. SQLite's feature set is very limited compared to MySQL or Postgres. With Postgres, you can make a horse inside of your database. And that horse can do amazing things to optimize your database load. Or it can be a Trojan horse that will just kill you. I like to keep things simple and SQLite is simple. But sometimes you need more advanced stuff and SQLite just does not cut it. But the cool thing here is that SQLite is kind of a subset of Postgres or MySQL. Meaning that if you need to go from SQLite to Postgres or MySQL, it's quite easy where the opposite is not true at all. So what I like to do is I start with SQLite and if I need I will then start expanding. And when you need to, you can always upgrade to Postgres or a NoSQL database like Tiger Beetle to make sure that everything is blazingly fast and web scalable. But in the start, just start with SQLite. Because when you start complicating your database, you have to pray to Odin and Tor to make sure that you understand the complexities that you are introducing. Ending. Now tell me in the comment section, what database do you use and for what reason? Did you make a choice about the database or did you just choose whatever was there and what came first? And don't forget to ask that subscribe and like button and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.